Thanks everyone for coming. Um, it's an important day for our footy club. We are announcing the re-signing of the contract extension of Matthew Nix for 25-26. Nix, he's done a wonderful job for our footy club. He's come in as a rebuild coach, the first rebuild Adelaide Footy Club's ever been through. Came in through some challenging times. He's set up a wonderful culture at this footy club, a really positive culture. He's got buy-in from our players. Um, he's got great people around him and we think he's done a great job in raising the bar and sort of improving and making progress through the rebuild. But today isn't necessarily about what he's done in the past, it's about what he's going to do in the future. So um, we've re-signed him because we think he's done a great job in the past but we think that he's going to take the next steps and um, take us into finals and being a successful footy club, so going from good to great and Matthew Nix is our man. Thanks, Tim. Uh, from my point of view, I want to thank Tim and, and the board. Obviously, I've had amazing support over the four years that I've been at the footy club. And um, as I said to a lot of you, this, this hasn't been in doubt. This has been a, a really open conversation that we've been having for a long period of time. So uh, I'm really proud uh, now to go forward with the footy club. I'm so proud of this footy club. Um, but as Tim mentioned, um, it's, it's heads down, let's get to work. Um, yeah, we're, we're a good club. Um, we've been a great club in the past and we want to get back to that. Our players at the moment are looking to uh, you know, become a great team on the field and we've got some work still to do, so we're heads down, business as usual. How are you guys? Tim, I guess the question would be, why now? Why not wait till the end of the year or the results this year not dependent on, on what, you, what you decided, obviously? Uh, well, Nixie and myself and probably the whole footy club, that. The CEO, the coach, the head of footy and the chair, we, we've been really aligned for a long period of time. Uh, it's been a conversation we've been having over, over the last six months and the contract really has just been a, a bit of a formality. Um, so we're, we're ready to, to announce, could it have been before round one? We're, we're in no rush. We felt today, we officially only signed it over the weekend. So this week was the week. What were your sort of emotions when you found out that you were getting the extension for two years? As we just talked through, it wasn't probably something that um, you know has come abruptly. It's something that we've been talking about ongoing. Um, we're on a journey. You know, we've been we've been developing a, a young group of players now for four years. Um, one thing that I have done is, is I've been on the same page as the footy club right throughout. Um, and when I talk about footy club, you know, leaders of the footy club, our board, um, there's been clarity in, it, in what it is we're trying to do. We've been very deliberate in the way we've gone about things, both from a list management point of view, acquisitions, um, our game style. You know, we believe strongly that our game style will stand up in finals. The work we have to do is, is get ourselves there. Um, that'll take some consistency and, and it also takes some time. So. As I said, we've been discussing and talking through this over over a long period of time now, so it's hard to say what my emotion was. Um, yeah, I, I've been proud of this footy club now for a number of years where you can walk around the streets and, and there's a really good feeling in the city. Now, that's from an off-field point of view. We, we want to transfer that now to on-field. And as I, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of work to do still. Well, the importance of a deal like this, it just eliminates any external noise. And if you do have a couple of early losses, it just allows, and I know you'll say, you've, you know, you guys focus on what you need to, but it just eliminates all of that and you can just get on with the job. Yeah, I, I guess so. You know, this, and that's what we are doing behind closed doors. We're, we're getting on with the job. Um, you know, win or lose, we, we're trying to start, uh, play a, st a certain style of football. We didn't do that on the weekend, and so the result, you know, was where it was at. We, we've got work to do on now consistently playing the way we want to play. Um, I guess with this, you know, out of the way and the fact that I, I will be here with the group, maybe that makes it easier. In saying that, we've got a, a very professional group that know what it takes. Um, we've just now got to put that together. Have you, um, has it been hard to, to stay patient, or have you always felt that support? from the board and from the club, because traditionally I think no coach had missed finals for a couple of years and, and stuck around. That plan, has that sort of felt consistent all the way through and, and, and the direction of the group? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I've, I've never felt pressure from the board, um, you know, other than there's, we're always pushing to be better and we want to fast track this, you know, this uh, rebuild, if you want to call it that. Um, I believe we're, we're doing that. 
I believe that we are developing quickly. Um, but at no point have I felt pressure from um, you know, the leaders of this club um, that we are going down the wrong path. As I said, that, that is challenging in, in, this, in this state. We are so passionate about our football and you know, we like winning. No one likes losing, I'm, especially me. Um, but there is a process that we are sticking to. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm proud of the way we've gone about it. Uh, this year's going to be an important one for us. How do you know when a rebuild is over? Oh, <laughs> great question. Um, oh, look, I think it's the rebuild is, is something, it's a, it's a term that's used in the media. Um, what we're looking to do is basically fast track a young group of players to develop quickly and get ourselves back in the hunt. You know, we want to be up there fighting for, for premierships again. Um, the only way to do that is to make finals footy, first and foremost. And, and realistically, the, the main way to do it is to finish in the top four. Now, as I mentioned right throughout, we've got work to do to get there. Um, the competition at the moment is the, the, the most balanced it's ever been. Uh, you know, anyone can beat anyone on, on their day. And so that does make it tougher again. You know, there are, there are 18 sides that are fighting for it. Only one's going to get there and win it. Um, we'd like to think that we're up around that mark, fighting, you know, each year as as we develop. Are you as far along as what you thought you'd be? Yeah, we are. I think we're confident that we're, you know, we've developed to the, to the spot where we should be. Maybe, maybe even slightly ahead at this point. Not not an on-field, but from an off-field point of view, um, you know, we've got the right people on the bus, no doubt. Um, yeah, you know, I mentioned both on and off-field. We got an, an amazing administration group. We've got. You know, a football staff at the moment, both coaching and high performance, that uh, we've been very deliberate with. Um, we'll continue to work with, with this group of building that cohesion. Uh, and then our playing, our playing group and our list management has been you know, spot on. Um, we'll continue to try and get better in that space through acquisition, through the draft. Um, but to this point, um, you know, we continue to push you know, in the direction we, we were four years ago. Some clubs like to have their, their goals, they keep them in-house, whereas Tim and, and yourself as well, you made pretty clear that the finals is the expectation. Do you like having that, that out there and being so obvious that it's a really clear marker of what, what you need to do and what success is this year? Yeah, I mean, we like to have it out there, but we also understand you've got to earn the right to play finals. It's not something that um, is given to you. You know, the competition doesn't allow that. Uh, we, we have a complete understanding of that. The expectation is fine. We've talked about our supporters. You know, they deserve to have that expectation. They've been through all the tough times with us, 2020, 21, when things were really tough. Um, you know, they didn't, they didn't drop off. They stayed on and supported us right through. We've got record membership at the moment. Um, you know, so we know they've stuck with us and they deserve to have an expectation that we're going to perform. Um, our challenge is now to, to live up to that. Uh, that comes with extra pressure and with a young group can be challenging, but um, you know, we'll do everything we can to earn that right. How big has the cultural shift been since you got here? Matt, it seems like there was a real focus on creating a sort of people person, people first environment. How much has that changed in the four years or so? Um, well, not a hell of a lot. I mean, we've done a lot of work on, on becoming, you know, I guess, a team first, um, you know, really looking after one, you know, each other, but two, community. Um, we've opened the doors up, you know, from the get-go. Um, try to be transparent on what it is we're doing. Try to bring in the state of South Australia, because we, as, as I said, we love our footy here. And we want our members to be able to see what it is we're doing. We want them to come for that journey. So it's one thing that I'm proud of. We've done it really well, and it's been tough. You know, we sat through a COVID year and had a documentary done on us um, in a year that, that we didn't perform where we wanted to. You know, that, that, was, that was quite a tough thing to go through. But that was our goal, was always to open up to our members and our fans and try and show them what it is we're doing. I think that's put us in the position we're in now where I, I believe we've got a, a supporter base that are proud, but they, they want more and they deserve more. Tim, just a similar thing, Joss's question before about how the patience required. I mean, footy clubs are notorious for not having that much patience. Has that been a hard thing from a, from a management point of view to, to retain the patience? And in not, not just the trust of Matthew, but in general terms? I, I think when you invest into a, a strategy, you have to, hold, have to hold, you have to stick fat. So what I've been 
proud of is that as a footy club that we made a decision to go through this process and, and rebuild and it's been a deliberate list management strategy over, over the last couple of years and we haven't deviated from that. Like There are ways that you could try to find quick wins to move up the ladder to get into that mid-tier but our process was let's build the foundation so let's get the foundations right and do a steady climb but we also, and it's, it's hard to be patient as a supporter of the footy club, we, we understand it, but we went through a, a decision probably 30 years into, this, into the history of this footy club to go through a rebuild and we, we've stuck to it. Um, now we're in a process where the foundations are there, we feel like we've got to take the next step and that's where we think Matthew and the leaders around him are going to be those people that are going to be able to deliver us to take us to that next step. How did you settle on two years as the extension? Uh, look, reasonable question. I think that's around what, what I think is industry standard. It, it means this year, 24, 25 and 26. So it's, so it's another three years for our coach. And, um, you know, I think we were pretty, pretty aligned on that. We felt like that, that felt about right. Is it fair to say, Matt, this will be the most pressure you and the group will have felt uh, as, a, as a collective since you arrived at the club now that those expectations have, have been lifted? Yeah, since arriving at the club, I think for this group that are here now, that have been through my tenure, yeah, I think with expectation comes pressure. Um, you know, with with ambition comes failure. So we've we've got to work our way through that. It's a space we're in at the moment. We've seen a lot of young sides get to this point, and um, you know, momentum's there. It's it's definitely not linear though when you talk about a young group developing. So the challenge this year is to handle that pressure. How do you prepare for that? Because I mean. You haven't coached a finals team. A lot of the players, bar a few left in 2017, haven't played finals. So how do you prepare for what you don't know, I suppose? Yeah, we go back to process, and it, and it sounds sounds like one of those boring cliches, but you, it, there's no point looking at the top of the mountain. All right, You trip on the way up. So we come, come back and we, we work on our process. What is it that gets it done for us? Even as, as recent as the, the game against the Gold Coast, you know, what, what did we get wrong there? Well, maybe we took our eyes off the process of what was quarter one, quarter two. Um, we played against a very good side as well. But um, that's where we'll stick. You know, we'll take it one game at a time. We'll, we'll lock in on what we do well. And, and part of that is too entertaining our supporters, putting on a performance that we know we can walk off and go, yep, that's the way we play. You talk about that, that, that those tough early stages and you know, you had a documentary and that sort of thing. Is there, a, is there a certain learning from those sort of periods that now drives you forward personally that you took from those tough times that is sort of leading you into the future? Oh, there's, there's so many learnings that I think um, you, when you lose games of footy or when things aren't going right, it's sometimes the best way to learn. Um, and that's where you see experienced sides get it done. You know, they've learnt across the journey where they haven't had success, so you know what it is that doesn't work. Um, the power comes when you actually get it right and you're able to lock into that, not be bored with it. Um, and do it every week, week in, week out. Now we're seeing teams at the top of the ladder like you know, Melbourne and, and Brisbane are sitting up there at this point that they're in that space. If you look at their list, they're an experienced group that have played a lot of footy together. Uh, that's what we're striving to get to and we're striving to get there quicker than any other side. Um, you know, there's learnings I've taken from our playing group. There's learnings I've taken from getting things wrong and or we've taken as a coaching group throughout. You know, nobody's perfect. Do you have any doubts, Matthew? Like, I know you came in at a difficult time, but was there any doubts in your mind early early days that maybe this isn't the way to go, or maybe I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't be human if I if I said there weren't. There are moments where you question, you know, what you're doing, but part of that is you know um, you get the right people around you, and you share ideas and thoughts. Um, that's what we've done at this footy club, both. From a coaching point of view, high performance I mentioned, we, we've got the right people here and we've got a lot of you know, diversity in that group. You know, there's been a lot of success in amongst there and so sometimes that backs up your point of view and sometimes that challenges your point of view and I feel like we've, um, as I mentioned, we've got the right people on the bus and so we'll continue to challenge each other and work together um, you know, to ultimately get there. Tech's going to play. Sorry? Tech's going to play. We, I gave you so many last week. I pretty much gave you exactly how we're going to start. So this week I'm going to hold off a little if that's all right. Did he get through that session that was required and went on the other night, the main session? He did, yeah. He got through and pulled up reasonably well. So, again, today was another light sort of movement session and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we see how he pulls up from this one. Tomorrow. I'm not going to give you much, am I?
<laughs> just so, going to come out to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be good. <laughs> we can have a look at it. So you wait till tomorrow for a call, name him, and then wait for. Yeah, we'll name him and then we'll just we'll want to check on tomorrow. Is Jake ready for a full game, Salida? You guess you're going to keep going? <laughs> He's ready for a full game, definitely. Yep. Okay. Well, after last week, what sort of response do you do on line field? Um, if you take away the comeback, well, yeah, what, what sort of response? Well, I, I, yeah, I don't want to take away the comeback because you know, we want to focus on what we did do well. Um, but, but I understand we, it wasn't four quarters. So we, we, the response was there last week, but it was too late. You know, we, we had a chance to call a timeout at half time and sit together. And, um, so we already know what it's going to take. Um, I'm confident in the boys that they're going to be able to bring that right from the start. And then the challenge is we, we're playing against a very good side in Geelong who are experienced and they'll back themselves you know, to beat us their way. But. Um, no, I've got no doubt our guys will, will bring it right from the start. How have you reflected on the, that start to the game, given there was obviously so much talk about being ready for round one and being ready for uh, to bring it from the opening bounce? Well, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't an area where you take too much concern. It wasn't a contest or a lack of effort um, you know, or an intensity. It, it was a small breakdown in an area of our game elsewhere. Um, that often, you know, on the TV might have looked like, oh, are they here to play? Um, we know we can fix that very quickly. We did, in fact, you know, in the second half. It took us probably the third quarter to really get it back on our terms and then, then, it, then it opened up. But no, we take a lot, we, believe it or not, we take a lot of confidence out the way we finished it. That's how we'll move forward. Really disappointed in our first half, but we will be trying to take the second half into this week. Yes. Last couple of us, is Jordan Buff still on track to play on a light duty the other night, but you still expect him to front up tomorrow? Again, sim similar to Tex, we're just going to make sure he, he, he pulls up well. In terms of um, between Towers and Hawkins and, and Cameron, is, is, that a, is that a specific match-up approach or do you feel like there'll be some different options floating to defend to defend those two in particular? Obviously it's, you know, it's yeah, t I mean, tough to stop. There aren't many better combinations. Um, we will have certain matchups there that we we feel will work best. Um, in saying that, there's there are a couple of hard ones to match up on. You know, very different players and and very very talented. So it'll be a big one for us.